Hello everyone and welcome to part three of my making spooky Halloween cards. I'm on 20 out of 52 so I have a lot more to go. Before I begin be sure to like and subscribe and let's see what I can come up with for today's spooky Halloween artist trading cards. For the first Halloween card of the day, I am starting off with a highly requested prompt, which was to make a ghost. So I decided to make a more traditional ghost, you know, the ones that look like they cut holes into bed sheets. And so I started off by doodling that, and I also gave him a little Halloween pumpkin bucket to make it look like he was trick-or-treating. And I also put little candies in the background just to add to that effect. And then I went in with my fine liner. Fine lining is probably like the most important step in this whole process because it makes everything that we've already done so far permanent. It's like the final, final sketch that you can't alter after you've done it. So this is a very important step. That's why it's very helpful to get the sketch right as well. Then I went in and erased those pencil lines underneath and now it's time to go in with my Ohuhu markers and add in some colors. I shaded the ghost in with some cool gray tones and then I moved on to giving him a little bit of blush just because I felt like it would be cute. I made the pumpkin bucket orange of course and then I filled in the insides of the pumpkin bucket with black and then I moved on to the candy. I kind of wanted it to look like little caramel candies so I made it this yellow color and then I made the background purple to make the yellow pop a little bit more since they are complementary colors and then I went ahead and added a little more purple in the background just to make the ghost pop a little bit more and I added some little fine gel pen details to everything. I added the gold gel pen to the candy to add little swirls in the background and then I wanted to bring those swirls further into the background with this purple gel pen so I added some purple swirls in the background but then I wanted the ghost to pop even more so I used the white gel pen to make it pop out and then I labeled this card ghost and I added these little swirls around the word ghost just to fill it a little bit more right at the corners and the first card is done. I love the subtle purple swirls in the background and now it's time for card number two of this video and for this one I decided to think about the word potion so that's what I'm doing for this one kind of a little poison potion if you will something along those lines and I decided to make this little face coming up out of the potion bottle that kind of looks kind of scary you know like it's it's not something you want to take okay don't don't drink this one. So I made it a little bit spooky by adding this scary little smoky face. I erased the sketch and now it's time to go in with my color again. I thought green would be a good poison color. Typically green foods are not desired and it's usually a sign of like, hey, don't eat this, don't drink this. So I decided to go ahead and go with green. And then I went ahead and added in all of the details that I needed to. I knew this one was gonna be a lot of fun because of the liquid and the glass. I decided to make the background of this one blue just so that everything else could pop. And I added some dots in the background just to blend it a little bit more. And now I'm going in with that white gel pen detail that I was talking about before that just makes the whole thing pop and completes the drawing. I decided to make the name for this one black and then I wrote it with white gel pen as well. And I labeled this one poison because after all was said and done, this definitely looked poisonous. And then I added a little skull and crossbone on this just to emphasize even more that you don't want to ingest this one. So here it is completed. I had a lot of fun with this one and I think the face is super spooky and cool. And now it's time for the next card. For this card, I focused on the word vampire. So this one was a lot of fun to design my own vampire character. When I think of vampires, a few things come to mind. First, I think of fangs, obviously. Then I think of the color black. I think of the color red. I think about how they have vibrant eyes sometimes. And then I also kind of feel like they're kind of moody. Do you know what I mean? Like they've got the fancy kind of makeup and they have red lipstick on. Well, at least that's what I think it is. Maybe they just naturally look like that if you're a vampire. 
But anyway, I decided to focus on those elements, so I gave her a smoky eye, and then later, like I said, I gave her some red lipstick. But for now, I'm just shading in all of her skin tones and kind of making it look like she has sunken in cheeks. And then I'm going in with that bright orange eye color and red lipstick like I talked about before. And then I also decided to pull some of that red down into her outfit. It kind of reminded me of those like Halloween vampire capes you would wear as a kid where it was black on the outside but the inside was red. So I was kind of channeling those vibes. And then I also decided to leave her hair kind of a white gray. I just felt like that would be fun for the look, but I wanted it to read more white than gray. I decided to try and add in some lighting details, so I brought in some purple, and then I used the gel pen to bring in even more light, and just to make sure I didn't hide the details that I wanted to be there, I decided to name her Vampiress, because, you know, that's a little more fancy than vampire. I punched the corners, and here is the the completed vampire. I think this one's really fun and it was really fun to concept my own design. And now it's time for the next prompt, which a few of you suggested. I combined two prompts into one. This has to do with mushrooms and eyeballs. And I know that's a weird combination. It really is. But wait to see what I did with it because I think it turned out really cool and it was a lot of fun. I repeated the process of sketching and then fine lining everything, and then it was time to go in with my colors once again. And for this design, I decided that I wanted to go a little bit more vibrant, a little bit more Halloween, a little more out there. So when I think of Halloween, the color that immediately comes to mind is orange. So I picked the brightest orange highlighter type of color from my Ohuhu marker set, and this is the color that I landed on. And Oh my goodness, it is highlighter bright, but it really made all of the mushroom designs pop. And then I did their little like branch stem parts, a duller orange color, but I still wanted to keep it all in the same color group. And now it's time to color in the eyeballs. So I wanted to make it look like there were eyes on the mushrooms, growing off of the mushrooms, kind of spooky, kind of weird, but still Halloween and kind of fun. So then for the background, I really wanted to emphasize the mushrooms. So I decided a blue would be the perfect color to highlight the orange. I named this one mushroom, even though it's kind of like mushroom and eyeballs. And then this card was complete after I added in those juicy white gel pen details. And I also felt like I needed to add in something more to the background of this card. So I decided to use my blue gel pen to add in some little circle details in the background. It's pretty subtle, but when the light hits it, you can really see them. And I think that just really completes the card and makes it feel like a full design. And now it is time for the last card of the day, which was by far the hardest one to do. I decided to draw out this cat and then I traced it on both sides of the card so that way I could have a little mirroring image of the same design. And I'm going to make one side of the cat the daytime and one side the nighttime. And at night, you can see the inside skeleton of the cat just for fun and just for spooky vibes. So that's what I'm doing for this design. Now I'm fine lining everything and starting that process all the way over again. The reason I said that this one was the hardest one to do is because it took me forever for some reason to figure out how I was going to get the same image on both sides of the card and like get it to be exact enough because I could sit there and struggle for, you know, probably honestly hours trying to make it mirror by hand. But I was like, I really want it to be perfect and better than that. But I couldn't come up with the idea to just cut it out for some reason. So I sat there and just wrestled with how to make it happen for a long time until I was like, oh, I can just cut it out. So now I'm coloring in the cat. I decided to make the daytime cat orange and the nighttime cat purple. They are kind of like opposite type of colors like yellow and purple are. So I decided that that would be perfect. I made the spooky side have some pumpkins. And then for the background, I decided that this light purple would really complement both sides of the card. So that's the color I decided on. I went in with some gold gel pen details just to make everything pop and then I finally decided to outline everything in white just to make the cats pop. 
Then uh, for this one to label it, I decided to just label it on the side, night and day, cut the edges, and here it is completed. Both sides look so cool, and I love the mirror image design. Here is the first design again where I drew this little trick-or-treat ghost. Here is the second with the undrinkable poison, the vampiress, the eyeball mushrooms, and finally the night and day cat. Let me know which one was your favorite. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, and let me know what cards you would want to see next. I'm doing a lot of these in shorts as well, so be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!